What's up, I'm Ijema, and welcome back to my channel. Today, we're going to be talking about testing, which is probably the only thing in software development that allows me to sleep at night. The benefits of testing are always kind of like preached to the masses on the internet, from being able to automate your manual checks, even down to making developers feel more confident when it comes down to their continuous releases. But when it comes down to writing tests, from my experience, I felt a lot of hesitation. I wasn't taught in school how to write proper tests. So when it came down to writing tests, I didn't know what a good test looked like, and I didn't know about the immediate benefits of how it's gonna help make my application code more reliable or stable. So for this video, I'm gonna walk through my favorite front-end testing framework, which is Cypress, and show you how writing tests with Cypress can actually be a lot easier than expected. To get comfortable with Cypress, we're gonna create a Next.js starter app, we're gonna install Cypress, and then we're gonna get comfortable with using some Cypress commands by writing out a couple of tests. If you've never written a test with Cypress or a test at all, that's totally okay. The purpose of this video is to have an introductory look at writing tests with Cypress. So we're gonna start from the very beginning. So first what we wanna do is create our own application that we wanna run our test against. So I'm gonna create a quick Next.js starter web app by calling yarn create next app. Then I'm just gonna follow the wizard that pops up when I call this command. So I'm gonna name my project, my app. If you already have a starter application where you wanna use Next.js, you can also manually create your project by installing the packages Next, React, and React DOM, and then create the following scripts. Where inside of your package.json file, you have your dev, build, and start scripts where you call Next commands with dev, build, and start. But for this video, we started our project off as an XJS app, so we don't have to do any of this manual configuration. So I'm gonna go inside of my new application called my app. And after that, once we've created our XJS project, I wanna start it by running yarn dev, which is gonna start our development build of our project. So when I call yarn dev, NextJS is gonna start our web app server on port 3000. So I'm gonna go to HTTP localhost 3000. And this is our NextJS app. So now that we have a running Next.js project, let's install Cypress so we can start writing our tests. I'm gonna run yarn add Cypress so I can install Cypress. I'm gonna open up my project in VS Code so we can look at a couple of our files. So here we have our package JSON file where we have our scripts, dev, build, and start. And then I installed my Cypress package along with Next, React, and React DOM. So to start Cypress, we want to call mpx cypress open in our terminal to open up the browser to watch our tests, or we can also call the command mpx cypress run so it can run headless or in our CI environment. Headless means that we're just not going to open up the browser, but the tests are still going to run. For this video, we're going to stick with running cypress open. To make things easier while developing, I'm going to create a new package.json script that calls cypress open, and I'm going to call that cypress colon open. So inside of my scripts here, I'm going to do cypress colon open, it's going to do a cypress open. So I have yarn dev for my web app, and then I'm going to call a yarn cypress open to open up cypress. So when you run cypress open for the first time, cypress is going to create a new cypress directory in your project that contains other directories like fixtures, integrations, plugins, and support. So when you create Cypress for the first time, you'll see fixtures, integrations, plugins, and support. Each directory has its own purpose, but for this video, we're gonna focus solely on the integration directory since that's the folder that will be holding our Cypress tests. When the Cypress window pops up, you'll see a list of tests already present. These are all the tests written by the Cypress team to provide examples on how to write a test in Cypress. So inside of the Cypress folder, we have our integration folder and we can see all these example tests. If we go over to the Cypress window, we can see that we have a Cypress integration section and then examples folder that contains all of our tests. We can run one of these tests by clicking on it and then it's going to open up our browser. Our default browser is Chrome in this case, but you can use Electron and Firefox. And then when we spin up our browser, we can actually watch the test runner click around and input text and interact with our web app. Inside of integration examples, you can click on the actions.spec.js and you can look through the steps that the Cypress team wrote for the test to be executed. But for this video, I'm going to delete my examples folder so we can start fresh. So now that we have our Next.js app and we know where our tests need to live, let's start thinking about how we want to write our tests. The whole point of writing tests is to check that your application is functioning as expected, but this can sometimes be easier said than done. 
So the way that I like to think about it is however I would manually check to see if a feature is working as expected, I would be very conscious about how I'm checking each aspect of that feature and then try to translate that into a series of steps that Cypress can understand. So by the end of the day, tests are just your programmatic translation of the steps that you would take for your manual checks. So for example, if we go back to our starter Next.js app, I wanna make sure that the welcome to Next.js text not only renders on the screen, but is also visible to the user. The way I would check this manually would be to reload the page and then look for the expected text. So if I wanted to translate my check into a test, I would translate my thought process into a set of commands that Cypress can execute. The first step being to reload the page and then the second step being look for a specific set of text that should be visible to the user. Test should read like a story. Each step should be explicit and extremely clear on what it's doing so each developer understands what that test is trying to accomplish. So with that, let's start writing our first test. I'm gonna create a new file called home.test.js in our integration folder. Since Cypress is built on top of an assertion library, we can create a new test by calling the it function, where the first argument is the name of our test and the second argument is a callback function that runs our test logic. So we've created a shell of a test where our test name is render the homepage text and we don't have any steps to execute just yet. So if we go back to Cypress, we'll now see our new test file appear. And if we click on our test, we can run it for the first time. So when we open up our browser, we can see our render the homepage text test runs with no commands. So before we jump into any of the following commands, it's always good to remember that the Cypress documentation is a great resource to always use as reference if you forget how to use a function or if you want to know if there's another function that's available to you for your tests. So in order to allow Cypress to interact with our app, we'll need to use the global Cypress CY module and then chain functions together, which act as steps that Cypress will take to interact with our application. So the first thing that we wanna do for our test is to load up the page. Cypress needs to be told which site it will be testing, so we need to tell the framework where it needs to go. We can accomplish this by using the cy.visit function. So I'm telling Cypress, for the first step of my render the homepage text test, I want you to visit my localhost 3000 site. And once I'm taken to that page, I now want to look for the welcome to Next.js text. To tell Cypress to do this, I'm going to call the contains function that tells Cypress to look for the DOM element that contains the text that I will provide. So for the next step, I call cy.contains and then I say I want to look for the text welcome to next.js with an explanation point. Then to be extra sure that the text rendered on screen and the user can actually see it, I'm going to chain the function should where I'm passing in the assertion that my found DOM element should be visible to the user. So now I have cy.contains welcome to next.js, and then I chain the should function where its first parameter is a string representation of what should happen. So my welcome to next.js text should be visible to the user. So now we can go back to Cypress and run this new test. So now we can see that our render the homepage text test passed. If you want to get a better idea of how each step is actually interacting with your site, you can hover over each step and Cypress is going to replay what it did in order to allow that command to pass. So for the visit command, if I click on it, we can see that the URL bar is highlighted to denote that Cypress had to change the URL in order to get to this page. The next step is contains, where Cypress was able to target the DOM element that contains the text welcome to Next.js. And then the chained action on the contains function is to check to see if the text is visible to the user. And we can see that that assertion passed since we can visibly see welcome to Next.js. This might seem super trivial now, but imagine you have way more pages, features, pieces of functionality that you have to test and make sure that every time you introduce something new, that new addition doesn't break a pre-existing feature. So having tests is just a great way to see, like set it and forget it. As you write more tests, you introduce the possibility of having tons and tons of disorganized files or just like huge test files that might be hard to parse and read through. So to prevent from having unruly test files, you can use the describe block to help organize your tests a little bit better. So I wrote two more tests, one that will check to see if the card links render and another to check to see if the footer rendered correctly. If I wanted to organize my test file so that these tests are grouped together based on a similar concept, I would use the describe block, which would take the same two types of arguments as an it block where the first argument is the name of my describe block, and then the second argument is the callback function that's gonna run our tests. So I'm calling my describe block render homepage. So inside of my test runner, I can actually see that my three tests are grouped under this new describe block. See right there. 
scribe blocks are not just helpful for grouping tasks together visually, but they're also great for allowing hooks to be used in order for actions to be executed before and after each of our tests. For example, I'm noticing that each of my tests are visiting the home page each and every single time. I'm just repeating myself. I can use the before hook so I can go to the home page once before all my tests and then each of my tests are already on the home page so I don't have to continuously repeat myself of saying go to the home page, go to the home page, go to the home page. But the top, that, and then I can remove, I can remove these guys. And if I go back into Cypress and rerun my tests, I can see that they should all pass as expected. There's no need for me to continuously refresh for each of these tests. And if I wanted to perform an action, but after all my tests, I could call the after hook. So what I'm doing here is I'm using the after hook so I can log out to Cypress that my tests are all done. You can see right here, after all my tests, tests are all done. So here I'm using the Cypress log command to render a message in the test runner, but a more realistic use case for the after hook could be to clear browser's cookies or clear out a testing database. So these have been the basics that you'll need to start writing Cypress tests for your web application right now. And one major piece of advice is to please start writing tests like today. If you're working on a feature, if you're working on a web app, you're starting from scratch, you're on a pre-existing code base, whatever it is, always champion writing tests. Yeah, that's it on Cypress testing. Let me know if you have any questions. I want to make a couple more Cypress testing videos because I think it would be helpful to talk about testing more. Um, and get people more comfortable with writing tests. I'm also on Twitter where you can send me a DM. We can talk about JavaScript, web development, YouTube video ideas, the Evo API, or anything in between. And speaking about the Evo API project, if you're interested in contributing to an open source project, there are going to be links in the description down below where you can get started with contributing. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I will see you all in the next one.